scriptures. If it was something like ban the Bill of Rights or ban the Bible, it had plenty of people signing. But yeah, I, I'm interested to see what went on with SB 277 because I thought that would be a slam dunk. There was enough protest and outcry from a lot of different uh, areas in in California. A lot of different groups of people were coming out against it, not just not just mothers or not just people who are constitutionalists or libertarians. Uh, the I think the black not the black nationalists but the um, the group that Farrakhan's with they were even speaking out against it and they had all kinds of people with them that were getting together and wanting to say no to forced vaccination because it's forcing that issue upon us. Nation of Islam. Nation of Islam. That's what it is. Thanks, thanks, CJ. Uh, Mary in New Jersey. Uh, go ahead. What is uh, what do you have to say? Hi, I've been a nurse all my life working in ICUs and education. And most doctors, like Ben Carson, is it, who's running for office? He's a surgeon. Mm -hmm. They're not aware of the controversy. They're not aware. Um, they just accept whatever is in the PDR, usually. Um, most do not become aware of this stuff. So, um, Basically, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, I had to actually go and because my wife was kind of on the fence about vaccination many years ago, and I had to actually debate my doctor. So I went with an army of documents, and at the end, she threw up her arms and said, you sure did your research, and uh, said, I'm still going to support vaccination, but I respect your decision, and you're definitely informed. So inform yourself, people. It's your job. It's not the doctor's job. It's not Big Pharma's job. It's your job. We'll be right back with the Alex Jones Show and the Overdrive Hours. Rob Dew. Oh my gosh, you should start crying. <laughs> Put it back on screen. Kids, and I certainly don't want the institution to go through this. That's all. Exactly <laughs> He's got the tissue out. Was. That's right. Well, where is Boner going to go from here now that he's reached the pinnacle of hog troughery? He has been feeding off the public trough for many years, and now he gets his cushy retirement and cushy pay for the rest of his life and his free health care. He really gets free health care paid for by you and me. I don't know why he's crying. Maybe it's some skeletons in the closet. Maybe we'll never know. Took a while for Hastert's skeletons. He was the uh, longest reigning Republican speaker for his skeletons. They're starting to come out. Seems like he was a wrestling coach that liked to bring little boys on trips. And uh, people are speaking out now. I want to jump over to Trump's tax plan. Fact check, this is from Yahoo. Math and Trump's tax plan doesn't always add up. And they're going on and on about how the tax plan is going to take away too much from uh, from the trough eaters. The The tax cuts will, will be nearly $12 trillion over the next decade. Well, we can't have that. What would the tax trough people do? What, what would the trough eaters do? How would they How would they regurgitate all this? Look at that. $12 trillion in the deficit. He wants to get rid of the inheritance tax. He wants to get rid of the different rates. He wants to cut, I think there are seven levels of taxes. He wants to cut them down to four. But what I like about what Trump did say about his tax plan is that he wants to go after waste, citing the example of hammers that cost 800 that you can buy in a store for a tiny amount of money, a musty reference that dates to the 80s Pentagon scandal. He also poked fun at the government-funded soccer field that cost a million. To make up the deficit, Trump would need to eliminate improper or insufficiently documented payments made by the federal government estimated by the GAO office to be $124 billion in 2014. So the government wastes, at, at just in one year alone, $124 billion. Now, Yahoo didn't really like his tax plan because I guess the people that work for Yahoo think that we should be taxed to the hilt so we can have free stuff. Like our, we had a guest here earlier who said he liked free health care, and I like high taxes. And you're paying for the free health care, buddy. You just don't get it. Uh, Donald Trump's amazingly conventional tax plan. The top marginal income rate would drop to 25% from nearly 40%. Middle income earners would pay 10 to 20%. Anyone earning less than 25,000 a year, 50,000 for married couples would pay no tax at all. Trump would scratch the marriage penalty, estate tax, and the alternative minimum tax. And businesses would pay no more than 15% of their income to the government. Why is that important? Well, U.S. companies are stashing $2.1 trillion overseas to avoid taxes. Now, with my tax plan, would be everybody pays 10%. And that's for everything. You don't have property tax. You don't have all these little fees and taxes that sales tax, nothing. 10%. And if the government can't live on that, well, then they've got to cut expenses. And I think the first place to start 
is by cutting expenses on those exorbitant salaries that our senators and congressmen make. They're public servants. If they don't like it, they can always leave. There's plenty of other people that want to come in and get free health care and a free office up in Washington, D.C. Let's start cutting where it hurts. Let's start cutting some of these salaries of some of these bureaucrats, these lifetime bureaucrats that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It's public service. It should not be a place where you go camp out for the rest of your life. You, these people need to go into the real world and see what it's like and get a real job. 2.1 trillion, if we were getting 10% of that, that's 210 billion right there, just on the overseas money that they're hiding. Then you got another 124 billion that the GAO admitted is wasted. So that's $334 billion without even taxing anybody, <laughs> any American citizen right there, just on those two savings alone. You could start there and then you tax everybody else at 10%. You get rid of the property tax. You get rid of all these other taxes. You get rid of all this bureaucratic state government, local governments, and you put the pedal to the metal. And, but we have to do that. We have to step up and do that. And if your people are paying less taxes, guess what they're going to do? They're going to spend more, and that's which is going to stimulate the economy. They're going to hire more if they're a business owner, and they're going to pay those people more, which is going to mean more taxes to the hog trough. Then that's what needs to happen. If we could get it down to 10% for everybody, we would have the greatest country the world has ever seen 10 times over, and we would have money to do all the things we want to do. We'd be able to pay for all the health care for all the people. Uh, yeah, some things are going to get cut, and we need to take a look at it and go, what do we really need to fund? What does the federal government, what does the state government, what does the local government really need to fund? And then everything else we put in the private sector, and we let the private sector decide what really needs to be funded. And we'll see. We'll see if giant sports stadiums for high school kids is the proper way to spend money. Or we'll see if million dollar soccer fields for the federal government is the right way to spend money. Now, I want to go to these two articles. FBI to collect and make public more information about public shootings of civilians. This is out of the Daily Mail. FBI will be will begin collecting and providing to the public more information about police shootings of civilians, Director James Covey said, while releasing nationwide crime data. Federal law enforcement officials have a knowledge in the last year of lack of reliable data about how often police use force in the line of duty. Former Attorney General Eric Holder urged for better record keeping in a speech this year, calling it a matter of common sense. I agree. It's definitely a matter of common sense. We need to know how th this is used so we can look at our police objectively and decide how they're doing their job locally. But why is the federal government pushing for this? Why is Eric Holder pushing for this? Well, is that in USA Today? Feds returning to local crime fight. That's right, the feds are concerned about the local crime. Mounting concern over recent violent crime surges in U.S. cities has prompted the U.S. Justice Department to call a meeting next month of more than a dozen law enforcement officials to deal with persistent public safety threats, ranging from chemical, yeah, criminal gangs to domestic violence. Earlier this year, in the face of rising tensions, believe police and public communities across the nation, which was kind of funded by the White House, hmm? a special White House policing force task force issued a slate of recommendations aiming at restoring public confidence. The Justice Department has opened inquiries into the operations of more than 20 police departments across the country since 2009, including Baltimore. Well, we saw how Baltimore turned out. There were riots, and now there's the murder rate skyrocketed because police don't want to do their job because they're afraid of being uh, called out and investigated. And it's a two-way street with police. If, if they didn't spend their time uh, harassing people for meaningless crimes, and I'm not saying they're all doing that, but and, and racial profiling and stuff that does happen, maybe they wouldn't have this community backlash. And shooting people that are unarmed, I, I was looking at a video earlier of a guy who was leaning against the car like this, and the cop just pulled out his taser and tased the guy. There's no reason to do that. Uh, so... Uh, on Monday, the federal government's identified five cities, Compton, California, Little Rock, Arkansas, West Memphis, Arkansas, Newark, New Jersey, and Flint, Michigan, which are poised to get an infusion of federal help to battle violence, even as most of the country has enjoyed relative calm. All those cities are run by Democratic mayors, so I wonder why they need uh, federal help. Maybe it's because they have draconian gun laws, so people aren't armed, so the criminals run rampant. And they talk about in this article how Chicago, Detroit, 
Camden, New Jersey, Oakland, and Wilmington, Delaware, all which I'm not sure about Wilmington, Delaware, but I bet it's a uh, Democratic mayor, all have, uh, they've addressed similar problems. The Justice Department had to go in there and look. This is about the federal government wanting to come in and control the police. That is why they want to release this data so they can say, look, police, they're not doing their job. We need to come in and help. And what happens when they come in and help? You get what you get in Chicago, which is lots of murders, really high gun control, and, a, and citizens and police that are afraid to do their job. So there's that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Uh, here's an article that we put up this morning. Survivors expose how sexual predators groom their victims. And this is uh, an interview that David Knight and Jakari Jackson did while they were following around the Pope. There were two ladies that were also following around the Pope. They were from SNAP. It's an independent confidential network of survivors of institutional sexual abuse. And I'm going to play a three-minute trailer from that right now. And when we come back, if we have time, I may get to another video or uh, we'll see where we go from here. We got John in Michigan wants to talk about SV40, so maybe we'll talk with him as well. But let's go to that video. This is a trailer of the longer video, which you can find the longer video in that article, Survivors Expose How Sexual Predators Groom Their Victims. Let's roll the video. I was abused by a priest as a child, but as a teacher in my parish grade school, I caught the associate pastor in the act of molesting a child. I know he's been caught four times, and yet he's still in a parish today. I was abused as a child from the ages of 9 to 11 by a priest in Alexandria, Virginia, who um, was a newly ordained priest. And he came to our house and he kind of adopted our family. You know, he ate dinner with us, he went on vacation with us. Um, he became like a member of the family and I loved him and I adored him. And he used that to start abusing me. SNAP is Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. It was founded in Chicago in 1988. And at that point, the founder, Barbara Blaine, thought there were a few dozen clergy sex abuse survivors, and she was reaching out to them. This pope has done what Pope Benedict did. He said a lot of things. You know, he said, we're not going to tolerate bishops abusing. We're not going to tolerate priests abusing. That how sad he is that, that victims were abused and, and that children were harmed. But the key word is he said and, you know, he needs to do. And that's the thing I think we're missing. The Archbishop, during the last grand jury investigation, and there have been two here in Philadelphia, uh, Justin Regali, when he, when the grand jury uh, report was handed down, I believe there were 37 predators still in ministry. And through the grand jury and the trials of Monsignor Lynn, who was convicted of moving, knowingly moving child predators and endangering children, and he is in prison for that part he played. But Cardinal Bergali quietly resigned. He's living a life uh, completely, he hasn't lost his title, hasn't lost his paycheck. And this weekend, we've noticed him in the front pew here at all the festivities. He's being honored and yet he left in disgrace. So to us, the message is, if you protect the predators, if you keep the church a secret, if you keep the lid on the scandal, you'll be rewarded, not you'll be held accountable. Child predators aren't the dirty old men hiding in the bushes. Child predators are charming, they're charismatic, they do many, many good things, and they help many kids. But that doesn't mean they're not raping other children. So you can't paint a predator as black or white. Because, you know, the Pope's not taking action, one thing we want to have happen is we'd like the federal government to take action. We'd like them to investigate these crimes. We've seen that happen in Australia, in Belgium, in Ireland, Canada. in Canada. And so we'd like to see the federal government investigate these crimes and, and, and you know, make the, the Pope release these documents like everyone else has done. The Catholic Church admits there's over 60, about 6,500 credibly accused priests in the United States alone. Um, we did some math and the Catholic Church also in 2012 said they believed there were about 100,000 clergy abuse victims in the United States. And if you do the math of the United States is 6% of the world's population, that would give you 1.5 million clergy abuse victims in the world. So you can catch the rest of that amazing interview 
And what is the Pope doing? Well, first of all, I'll give you that uh, headline again. Survivors expose how sexual predators groom their victims. It starts off with Leanne McAdoo talking about some articles.